Dante's or uh, Vita Nuova, you have all read it, it's really a complicated text from this point of view. Because for, being, for it being a, an autobiography, it's amazing how little he tells us, really, about his own life. There's nothing concrete about this text. We know that it has taken place, in, that it takes place in, in, in Florence, but Florence is not even mentioned as a city. We only infer that it's Florence because at one point there is a description of a river that crosses by it, and which Dante uses because he has had an inspiration. Words come to him with the same kind of strength and naturalness with which the waters of the river flow. That's the, that's the implied meaning of that association, the description of a landscape. There's a river, and, 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 and uh, fantastic words came to me, which I, I jotted down because I want to remember. It's the turning point in poetic terms of the Vita when he addresses them, when he understands that to write poetry, he writes a famous line, women who have intellect of love. It is a remarkable line, donne che avete intellect of love. It's a remarkable line, and I will ex explain why it's a remarkable line. It was never written, that kind of perception was never really part of, of uh, the, the warehouse of, uh, of uh, the poetic imagination. So what does Dante do? It's, 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 it's a little bit abstract. It's a kind of enigmatic account that he gives. In this, he's unlike Augustine. It begins with a, a, a reference to the Book of Memory. In that part of the Book of My Memory, within which little has been written, I find words which I cannot go on repeating in all, but I would just transcribe some sentences, the meanings of them. So he understands that uh, here we have, first of all, it's a book of memory, a necessary act of retrospection, a memory it has a number of other implications and dangers. What are the implications? Well, Dante is writing this, he's about 25, 24. Uh, he had, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a provisional retrospection of his growth as a poet. He certainly knows that memory is the mother, as you know, of the muses. This is the famous myth, right? Uh, there is a, the old Greek myth that memory, uh, Minimosine, uh, lay with, uh, with Jupiter for nine successive nights, and from their copulations, the nine muses came into being. So memory is the mother, so, which means that art is always an act of memory, a, a, a way of a remembering, a way, an act of remembrance, we could say. But it has also some uh, dangers that Dante will, will go on reflecting about, is that if you go on getting caught in the activity of memory, you run a serious risk, the risk of changing your sense of life and your sense of reality into the phantasms of memory, because that's what memory is. It's called, uh, as you know, the eye of the imagination. That's the famous uh, description of memory. The Greeks, of course, put, used to put memory in the heart. And in fact, as you know, uh, the ancient Greeks used to put memory in the heart. In fact, as you know, in Italian, we still say, say or, or in Spanish, recordarse, no? which really has the etymology. In English, record has the etymology of the heart, we remember. Uh, but in the Middle Ages, it's already part of the imagination. It's called the eye of the imagination, which means that it has a visionary component to it. And this explains the emphasis on dreams, vision, strange apparitions with which this text is uh, uh, punctuated from the beginning to the end. But Dante, I repeat, <coughs> understands that there is a danger to memory, and the danger of memory is the transformation of experience into a phantasmatic reality. We are all living in the world. It's like you are always looking backwards, and you, you're not Janus-like. You don't look in all directions. You don't look ahead. And Dante will turn against <laughs> memory. The second thing that we get from that little exordium of the, uh, in that part of the book of my memory, we know that Dante is praising himself. I, I find words uh, which have been the, the inscriptions of memory. I'm not going to repeat them all, but only some of them. We know that Dante is casting himself as the editor of his own book. That's the double voice. And this is the double structure of this little text of his. 